Hey, welcome back guys. We've talked a lot about space on this channel because like me, a lot of you guys think it's mind-blowingly cool. However, as I'm sure you're all aware, space is a very inhospitable environment. There's a million things out there that could kill us and many things that could go wrong as we try to get up there. Sometimes this has led to the deaths of people and hard lessons to learn. My name is Danny Burke and this is the top 10 terrifying space disasters. Also, for those of you that don't know, we have a Patreon now. Yes, go and check it out. The link is in the description. You can show your support for us and in return you will receive exclusive rewards that you just can't get anywhere else. So go and take a look right after the video. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Challenger disaster. This space shuttle had many successful missions in the 1980s and it gained a lot of attention for its 10th mission on January 28, 1986. One of the reasons was that it was to carry America's first teacher in space, Krista McAuliffe. Because of this, millions of people, including school children, were watching the launch live to see the historic event. Just over a minute into the shuttle's launch, as the world watched, a burning gas failure caused the shuttle to explode and disintegrate. It's thought that the crew may have survived the initial explosion, but not the resulting impact with the ocean below. 17% of all Americans watched the disaster live, and many people will tell you exactly where they were on that fateful day. Coming at number 9 now, we have Columbia. The Space Shuttle Columbia was one of NASA's flagship spacecrafts. In 2003, it had already flown 27 successful missions to space, however, the 28th was to be its last. During the launch on February 1st, a piece of foam insulation broke off from the shuttle's external tank and stuck into its wing. NASA managers played down the damage and said there was nothing that could be done anyway. Upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, hot gas burst through the shuttle's wing, causing it to become unstable and break apart. All seven astronauts were killed, and NASA suspended its launches for two years while an investigation was launched. Coming at number 8 now, we have the Vostok explosion. On March 18th, 1980, the Soviet Union was preparing to launch a rocket carrying ICAR, a military spy satellite. At the time, the Soviet press reported it as a success. We now know that is far from the truth. Sometime before launch, the rocket exploded on its pad, blowing up 300 tons of rocket fuel that incinerated the whole area. The blast killed 48 soldiers and many more were left with horrific burns. Moving on to number 7 now, we have Spaceship 2. This space plane was Virgin Galactic's main foray into commercial space travel. On Halloween 2014, co-pilot Michael Osbury unlocked the shuttle's feathering system too early during a test flight over California's Mojave Desert. The system is supposed to be used to ensure a safe descent, but it was deployed while the craft was still ascending. It disintegrated two seconds later, killing one pilot and injuring the other. The co-pilot was cited as partially to blame for the crash but the ship's designers were also faulted for not creating a fail-safe system. The crash sparked a lot of debate about the safety of commercial spaceflight after decades of it being conducted by governments. Alright, next up at the number 6 spot now, we have Apollo 1. Neil Armstrong first set foot on the moon as part of the Apollo 11 mission, but as you might expect, there were 10 previous space missions that were part of that project. The first one, Apollo 1, was a space disaster. As the crew went through the checklist before their launch, an electrical fault sparked a fire in their command module. In a matter of seconds, it burned them alive, causing death by asphyxiation. The inquiry that followed found lethal design flaws with the Apollo 1 module. If there is any silver lining to take from this story is that these safety improvements helped Apollo 11 successfully land on the moon two years later. Alright, coming at number 5 now, we have Soyuz 1. At the height of the space race with the US, the Soviet Union launched Soyuz 1, a capsule manned by cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov. To put it quite simply, it wasn't ready. The engineers who built the craft knew it wasn't ready, the management team knew it wasn't ready, even Vladimir himself probably knew it wasn't ready. The craft had failed three earlier unmanned tests, not a single one succeeded. Still, the government put so much pressure on them that the launch went ahead anyway. Amazingly, Vladimir managed to reach space, but the problems had already reached critical levels. The whole shuttle was basically breaking and the mission was aborted. Vladimir then had to manually re-enter Earth's atmosphere, which he survived, but disaster struck when the craft's parachute failed to deploy. It slammed into the ground at high speed, instantly killing Vladimir. For many people, this marked the Soviet Union losing the race to the moon. Alright, at the number 4 spot now, we have the Nederland catastrophe. This one is frankly astonishing, but the reason most of us in the West haven't heard about it is because it was a Soviet disaster 
Carter from 1960 at the height of the Cold War, so it was kept tightly under wraps. Now we know the full story. On October 24th, 1960, the Soviet Union was testing an intercontinental missile using rocket technology. It was a 30 meter long, 141 ton missile called the R-16. As it sat on the launch pad, a short circuit caused the rocket's engines to fire accidentally. The fuel tanks blew up in a huge explosion. The fireball incinerated all of the nearby crew. In total, 78 people were killed and a further 120 were injured. The Soviet Union did not even acknowledge the event had happened for another 29 years. All right, moving on to number three now, we have the Zichang disaster. In the 90s, American engineers were being forced to attach their satellites to foreign shuttle launches because of the ban on commercial payloads following the Challenger disaster we discussed earlier. One of these launches was near the small Chinese town of Zichang. The satellite was attached to the untested Chinese Long March 3B rocket. An error in the rocket's onboard timing system meant that it began to arc way too soon. The 426 ton missile flew for 22 seconds over a valley with buildings and people in before slamming into the side of a hill. The huge explosion sent shockwaves throughout the whole area. The Chinese government said that six people were killed, but international observers said that area had not been properly evacuated and as many as 500 people may have died in the disaster. Coming at number two now, we have the X-15. This was a joint project between NASA and the US Air Force for an aircraft that could skim just below the surface of space. The test flight took place on November 15th, 1967 and was piloted by Michael J. Adams. The craft successfully reached its peak altitude of 266,000 feet and began to pull a rocking maneuver on board so that the camera could scan the horizon. Unfortunately, this rocking sent the craft into a spin and then a nosedive. It reached speeds of 160,000 feet per minute and broke up during the descent, killing Adams in the process. And finally, number one now, we have Soyuz 11. On June 7th, 1971, the Soviet Union's Soyuz 11 space shuttle arrived at a space station on a routine mission. Three weeks later, they left to return to Earth. 12 minutes into their descent, a faulty ventilation valve opened while the capsule was still 104 miles above Earth. The three crew members suffocated to death almost immediately. The strange thing is, the ground crew had no idea anything was wrong at all. It wasn't until they opened the capsule that they found the three cosmonauts were dead and didn't know the cause of death until a full autopsy. Although they were on their way back to Earth, the fatal accident occurred in space, making these three men the only human beings known to have died in space. But if this space disaster video has taught us anything, unfortunately, they may not be the last. Let's hope safety prevails. If you guys do want more space videos, you've got the whole universe to choose from. Let me hear your suggestions. I'm Danny Burke. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you all in the next video.